Hello and welcome to Smarter Tech. My name is Nick, the EMF guy, Pino. I'm an advocate for safe technologies and the author of a book called The non Tinfoil Guide to EMF, the creator of a course called Electropollution Fix. This episode is not about me, it's about you and how you can get involved with EMFs. If you've just been hearing about the problem and you tell yourself, like many people contact me every week, how can I get involved? How can we fix this problem? The fact that our cell phones are not safe. The Wi-Fi is not safe. The cell towers aren't safe. Nothing when it comes to our use of man-made electromagnetic fields is safe because the regulations just haven't caught up yet with the latest science. So we're in a bad spot when it comes to this environmental toxin, but you can change something about it. So I wanted to share some ideas. This episode will be very short. It's just an introduction to some organizations that uh, I love, that I believe in, and I'm gonna share some of them on screen here. But I just wanna start by saying that, you know, it's important that you become an advocate for your own life and in your own family first. And uh, one of my mentors, Paul Check, is a personal trainer, he's a holistic um, health practitioner, and in his uh, Czech Institute, health coaches and practitioners that are now, um, that take his certifications, have to become the example. They have to master exercise and nutrition and holistic health. They have to troubleshoot themselves before they, they're able or before they're allowed ethically to troubleshoot their clients. And I think it makes sense, right? So if you're um, motivated about the topic of EMF, motivated to spread the word, it's important that you remember that if you make these changes at home, if you start by turning off the Wi-Fi at night, you start by um, changing your cell phone habits, you start by um, on doing multiple things that I share in my book, in my course, on this Smarter Tech Show, or in many other presentations I've done in various podcast appearances, there's many things you can do. Most of them are free uh, or uh, cost a few dollars, and most of them don't require you to, uh, to do anything very advanced or complicated. So it's very basic stuff. But if you don't even do it yourself, well, it's, it, it's not aligned. So it's important that activists, the first thing they should do is to make these changes at home. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to get it 100% right and to um, uh, shield your bedroom and, and do these advanced solutions at first. You can think about them long term. I haven't shielded my bedroom yet because we're, we're just purchasing this place now. And when I do, and I plan to do so, well, uh, you'll hear about it and I'll talk about it. But as of now, I haven't done it, but I have done all the rest that I can. This computer is on Ethernet cable, for example, right? So there's many things that I've done and shared with my community in the last years. And as uh, the author of an EMF book, uh, that I've learned myself and that I've started applying. So walk the talk first. This is very, very important to live by example because how can we expect others to take us seriously if we don't even change our own habits, right? It's not uh, a question, Some, some for some people I know it's black or white, kind of question. So if they see me on a cell phone, they would say, aha, <laughs> the EMF guy is caught red handed on a cell phone. I use a cell phone guys from time to time. I try to minimize my use. I try to only use it when uh, it's really necessary. I have a phone subscription. Some say I should I shouldn't have one. Some um, activists are uh, hold the position that um, people who advocate for safer technology should not have a cell phone. I respect that, but I don't agree personally. Uh, we are in this world and the phone helps me in many ways. I need to minimize exposure and my fights personally is about education uh, and I, I consider that um, it is still something uh, ethical to do to use a phone sparingly. Just like if you're an advocate for 
uh, the environment, is it ethical to drive a car? Well, that's a good question. Is it ethical to take a plane to go to a meeting in order to save the environment? So all these questions are real when it comes to activism. Um, and there's a wide array <laughs> of, of opinions there. But the only person that knows if you're aligned with your own values when it comes to EMS is yourself. So it's a very personal thing. So try to achieve a level of understanding and of walking the talk that you feel comfortable with and aim to get better with time. Also teach family members and friends first, right? That's important. The second thing you can do, and I'm gonna share my screen now. Hold on just a second. Click optimize and then I'm gonna share different organizations um, these are all of them are nonprofits I'm not a nonprofit I make profit uh, because I want to make a living out of this I decided to go the for-profit route when I started my activism if you will uh, because for me is the best way that I know of to get the maximum impact because I'm able to do this full time and I'm also uh, able to donate uh, now in the multiple thousands of dollars uh, in the last few years to nonprofits. So I'm able to give back some of that profit that I make off of uh, EMF education. So that's my strategy, but it's not for everyone, but um, for some it is. So children's health defense. If you want to get involved, you tell yourself, okay, Nick, how do we change that? How come a cell phone is sold and it's not safe? That's unacceptable, right? It, it shouldn't be that way. And you're right. You're right. It shouldn't be that way. So we need to change regulations. How do we do that? Well, normally speaking, if we have uh, health agencies or governmental agencies like the FCC, Federal Communications Commissions, or Health Canada, who is responsible for these uh for looking at the possible health effects of that technology, well, these institutions or health agencies are failing us. So what do we do, right? Well, some advocacy groups are trying to fight for safer regulations. And one of them is children's health defense. Um, children's health defense is um, one of the main uh, people involved with it is Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who I deeply, deeply respect. So under the known culprits of uh, environmental toxins that are known to be a problem to the public and that also are um, protected by health agencies that have revolving door policies or huge conflicts of interest between the health uh, or the governmental agencies and the industry. Well, part of it is wireless. So they share on their website multiple things. Uh, lately, they shared about the OTARD rule, which, which is um, an industry strategy to put new antennas on people's homes uh, without having to go through the paperwork to get these antennas uh, approved and n nothing like that. They talk also about you know fluoride. They talk about uh, they talk about vaccines and yes. Geez, that topic is so polarizing, it's crazy these days. But they talk about vaccine safety. So they're an advocacy group. I highly recommend uh, looking at their stuff and donating because right now, along with many other groups, they're suing the FCC. What does that mean? Well, they're trying to um, get the FCC to say, we haven't really looked at the independent science, which they haven't. And the judges in court a few months back have said, uh, well, where's your evidence that um, this radiation isn't dangerous? And the FCC kind of stumbled and said, uh, well, it's the, the FDA. Uh, but the FDA <laughs> gave the mandate to the NTP, National Toxicology Program, to study that stuff. And what did they find? it's clear evidence that it's carcinogenic. So how does that work? And now the FCC keeps saying that there's no effect. So anyway, you know, it's nonsensical. And I've, I've talked about that plenty on that show. If you search the archives on my website, dmfguy.com, you'll find uh, plenty, uh, plenty of stuff to chew on if you want to learn about the FCC and the conflicts of interest and whatnot. But just understand this. There's a few groups that are really, really incredible when it comes to fighting these giants and trying to make things right. 
And Children's Health Defense is one of my top ones. I've donated myself uh, several thousand dollars to this organization, and I'm proud to say so. Uh, and I invite you to do the same. So it's very important that we support these organizations that are funded by the public. The third thing you can do, so be an advocate, support nonprofits that are fighting for stricter regulations and regulations that might eventually even be called safe. Right now, we don't know what the safety levels of EMFs are. Remember that. We know that there is no such thing as an EMF level that is safe because we don't know what the threshold is for toxicity in humans. It might be zero. If it's zero, we're in deep trouble. It might be certain units and we need to go down to levels that are reasonable. But remember what happened with asbestos or certain environmental toxins like uh, heavy metals, like lead, for example. Each decade, the amount of lead that is considered safe, quote unquote, goes down because we discover new facts about how it impacts our cells or children. So anyway, it's going to evolve, but get involved. Number three, get involved locally. And that's important. If, if you have a child in schools, for example, Tech Safe Schools, that's a project of an incredible organization that I'm really bowing to right now because the amount of projects that they've put together is just mind-boggling in the last few years. And the amount of impact they, they, they had is incredible. Uh, I, I really salute their work. I've been donating also to these projects. And... Uh, their branding is clean, they are concise in how they talk about EMFs, so it's a good resource that is credible, that you can feel good about uh, sending to um, your public health officials, even school teachers or um, uh, school people responsible for decision making in schools or school boards and whatnot. Uh, Tech Safe Schools is really about, you know, children are spending eight hours a day, five days a week under radio frequency radiation from Wi-Fi and whatnot. So that's a big issue. So if you want to change things in a local school, I highly recommend looking at tech safe schools. If you want to change things in your city, for example, it might be the rollout of 5G, right? Which is a, a very important topic to tackle because it's rolling out fast. It's increasing our global exposure and also the proximity of citizens to these cell towers. So that's, that's something we really need to tackle. 5G crisis, which is a project of Americans for Responsible Technology, which is also is that also part of grassroots environmental education? Um, really sorry if I'm butchering this. I, I think it might be uh, grassroots communications. So it's also parts of grassroots, if I'm not mistaken. And if I am, I'm really sorry. But either way, 5gcrisis.com is the website. And you can find these local groups in the U.S., uh, Alaska, Arizona, blah, blah. It's, it's multiple groups in multiple cities and states that are there. So that's for the U.S. For Canada, you can uh, look at uh, Citizens for Safe Tech or C Canadians for Safe Tech, um, if I'm not mistaken. But you can just look at Canada Safe Tech and you'll find these advocacy group or Canada EMFs. And in your country, if you're listening to this, there might be groups. So look for groups around electro hypersensitivity or safe tech or electromagnetic fields, electromagnetic pollution. And normally with a search on DuckDuckGo or a browser like that, I do not recommend Google because of the censorship. Uh, you might be able to find these groups locally. So that's something to think of because getting involved with the community right there in your city is so important. And to um, confess right here on this podcast, I haven't uh, gotten involved as much as um, I would have liked in Montreal uh, because of my work internationally and in, uh, publishing in English language. I'm a French Canadian from Montreal, so I should be involved here in the city. And I, I know there are many great groups. I've connected with them barely and uh, I kind of feel bad about it but sometimes uh, I, I I have been in this in that cycle where I feel I haven't done enough but and that's something I want to close with because I, I that that's all for my recommendations on how to get involved but 
sometimes I feel like I'm not doing enough, even though you know my book have had a little bit of uh, impact in the world and it has like 600 and something reviews on Amazon that are mostly positive. And uh, I, I think I've uh, changed uh, the topic a little bit for one individual quite a lot, but sometimes I feel it's not enough. So that feeling is toxic. And we need to be happy with how how far we've come and you need to be happy even if you influence one person you need to be happy about it you need to be uh content or to have uh, gratitude when you're able to change one family because you help them turn off wi-fi at night and now they're a little bit safer in their home right but at the same time we do not need we shouldn't settle for that because there's a lot of work to do so it's a balance. It's a balance between being aware that there's the cell towers and those toxic exposures and being afraid or anxious about them. So it's, it's a balance between using technology like I'm doing uh, right now uh, to record this podcast and to communicate my message and to do Zoom meetings and to do podcast interviews and um, produce my course or write a book. But it's a balance between that and also making it in a safer way. So that balance is only for yours to find. I've struggled for years trying to find mine. And I must say that uh, it's a difficult path to follow as an activist to not always be in fight or flight. To find your happiness uh, in a topic that seems doom and gloom and where we're just at the beginning of the change curve, right? The beginning of a curve that goes like this, a kind of a parabolic curve, if that's the right term, that at the beginning is so slow, you barely perceive that anything is moving, and then it will eventually accelerate until it reaches a point of public awareness, and then everything will change. Look at what happened with gluten, for example. And that's, of course, it got recuperated in kind of a very marketing-heavy way, but still, gluten intolerance or even celiac disease, uh, the awareness was barely there uh, 10, 15 years ago when I started writing about health. Now it's way better. Organic foods have gotten more popular. Uh, the ketogenic diet that is um, that has great applications in medicine. Uh, it's not the uh, end-all be-all, but you know, there's many topics where I did not believe that it would evolve so quickly, but it did. So who knows, EMS might really explode in the next several years. And if you're you're here with us, helping us spread the word is really going to help. So that's about the balance. Please share. Share and educate people you, you, you care about if they're open to it. Do not try to stuff your information uh, in, down the throat of people. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes um, I'm with friends or I used to do that more than, uh, than nowadays. I think I've gotten a little bit wiser. But sometimes I just start speaking and talking, talking, talking. And people don't care as much as I do. And it frustrates me. But they don't know what you know. So where they're coming from, the topic of EMFs is not that important, or maybe it's a minor problem, and uh, how is it more of a problem compared to um, other problems in the world that they perceive as a threat, whether it's a pandemic, or whether it's environmental toxins, or Monsanto, and now purchased by Bayer, and the poisons that are being sprayed on our planet, or maybe it's... uh, uh, many, many problems of inequality in society between uh, people of different skin colors or different, uh, the poor versus the rich. There's so many issues in our world that you can think about. You can think about war, about people that are suffering from hunger still. So there's a lot of issues. So sometimes I'm tempted to, to say, no, my issue is more important than your issue, right? So it's important to uh, be balanced also. And when people are open-minded to maybe a five-minute conversation, well, just talk about the topic for five minutes and then be done with it. And maybe you've just seeded a little something and then you send them a resource. You send them a website or you send them to one of the organizations or you send them to my website if you think that's a good resource to share to this podcast. So you just start there and you don't want to stuff people too much. And finally, I just want to end this podcast that's a little bit 
uh, improvised here, so I hope you like it. But uh, focus on what you want, because a lot of people are focused on stopping 5G, and that's good. I think we should stop 5G. I also think we sub we should stop future iterations like 6G and beyond. You, you know, there's so many nonsensical applications of wireless that are only going to increase our global exposure to electropollution. And I think that's nuts considering what the science says when you really look at it independently. But anyway, all that to say that instead of being uh, anti-5G, anti-cell phones, anti-this, anti-that, why not be pro-something, right? And that's, we should probably be both, like stop the bad stuff and then build something better. But people are fed up with um, bad news. And that's just, I see that there's really a, a shift and a movement towards good news and, and, and positive approaches instead of uh, doom and gloom approaches like, oh, the 5G network is going to uh, destroy us. You know, it might. And I don't know if it will. But what's the message here? The message is we need to adopt safer technologies. We need to wire our stuff up. It's faster, it's more secure, it's healthier. When you do these changes at home, you reduce Wi-Fi exposure, you turn off your phone at night, you will feel better, you will feel energized, right? So that's a positive approach. I could say, if you don't, you will feel miserable. You will be insomniac. And Probably both messages are good to share, but the, here's the deal. I think it's unbalanced. At the moment, a lot of people are in the doom and gloom, fight or flight kind of thing, and the public and people who are not aware of the problem and not as motivated as you guys might be listening to this, some of them shut down if you overdo it when it comes to the doom and gloom. So sometimes a positive approach and say, you know, just something curious that happened to me. I turned off my cell phone. I woke up this morning and I feel better. Like I sleep better. Just that. And then see how they react. They might say, oh my God. Well, may maybe that's something I'll try. Instead of saying something that makes them feel bad about themselves. Like, hey, you shouldn't do that. That's bad for you. That, that will cause you insomnia and that's irresponsible, you know? So that's, people don't react to this messaging in the right way, oftentimes it can backfire on you. So try to keep it, it's not, again, I don't wanna um, make it appear as if it's a message that we should be all happy about it because some people are suffering tremendously. I'm just talking about um, communication strategies for the public and you will find your style of communication that you think works the best, but just try different approaches. Some people will react better to a positive approach, like what are the benefits of my life if I do these things, versus a, a fighter approach. We have to fight against uh, Goliath, right? Uh, uh, we have to destroy telecoms or things like that. So hone in your message to who you're, you're, you're speaking with, and it will really help you also and also your mindset sometimes i feel sad about this entire thing you know i hear stories i've i've had the the unfortunate passing um of Mar maria august um several years back who took her life because of electro hypersensitivity so Sorry, I'm getting a bit emotional. It always does. Um, it still does something to me very, very, very deeply because she was so sick. And I, I cannot feel happy or be positive about something that tragic. And I don't want to be. But she also agreed that sometimes uh, she agreed with the message of my book that using humor about a, such a doom and gloom topic might work. So... Anyway, some people hate it, some people love it, but I guess uh, if, at least try it, try a positive approach in certain situations and see how people react to it. And also in your life, if you're only thriving or consuming information that is negative, bad news, the industry is winning, all this radiation is killing us, well, you sure gotta have to meditate and find your center and sometimes have good feelings too, or else you will not last as an activist. And I know that because, well, <laughs> I fell into this trap uh, way back 
of being really con uh, focused on the negative stuff and it, it sure had a very big toll on my on my mental health so just try to manage yourself stay positive sometimes i like to think in the morning we're winning <laughs> i don't know i don't know if that's if that's true sometimes i feel like it's not but at least kind of have this this mindset that eventually things will work out and we're going in the right direction and more and more people are waking up kind of have that feeling that there's a movement and we're part of it so i hope you like this episode it's a bit different uh, kind of focused on mindset compared to, to what i um normally do if you're listening on this on youtube BitChute, on my website please leave a comment how do you feel about this episode do you like this kind of a more uh, personal message and what is your experience maybe with um activism are you still stuck in that fear cycle um do you struggle because other people might struggle yet like you and we're we're all here to support each other and if you like the show please share it widely with people you care about and i'll see you next time thank you so much i hope you liked this episode of smarter tech we're taking a short uh summer break during the month of August and September, and we're going to be back with another episode, the beginning of a new series on EMF harmonizers starting on September 22nd. So I hope you enjoy your summer, and I'm going to see you on September 22nd with another episode of Smarter Tech. In the meantime, you can always watch our entire archives of top interviews with uh, thinkers in the realms of safe uh, tech, the harmful tech, and everything in between at the EMF mfguy.com just click on smarter tech you're going to find all our previous episodes and i hope you like it see you then